The sun is shining up on Grimes Hill this morning, and I'm taking it as an omen for only good things ahead for Wagner College, for the Guild, and for each of you. Um, I think this is going to be our largest group gathering, uh, and hopefully everybody will be inspired when you hear the whole program. And uh, I don't want to steal any of Jan's thunder, so I'm going to introduce you all to a lady I think most of you have met already, our honorary guild president and our wonderful first lady, Jan Martin. She has a tight schedule today, but she is going to be with us for a few minutes. So Jan, take it away. Hi everyone, it's so good to see you. I am so sorry that we cannot be in person, but it's so wonderful that we have this tool and this opportunity to come together. The program today is so rich. I am so sorry that I won't be able to participate, but I know you'll all have a wonderful day. And I just wanted to tell you that we think of you all the time. We wish everyone good health and a happy, healthy spring. And I will see you for sure at the June meeting. And I can't wait until we come back together. And you'll have cookies for us all, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, the pandemic has certainly given us a lot of challenges. And I was thinking about the fact that we're spotlighting the nurses and health and everything. And when you think about it, we don't think about our health until sometimes it becomes in danger. So that's one of the things. But in spite of the challenge of the pandemic, I want to assure you that the Guild is alive, well, and thriving. And we still are committed to the mission of the college and the mission of the Guild, which is to support Wagner College and to support any students that are in need. To that end, the Guild worked very, very hard over a period of years to establish two scholarships and they have been named the Lila T. Barb's College Guild Scholarship for the Wagner College. Lila was the class of 1940, by many who got the privilege of getting to know her. She was the longtime president of the Guild. Tough steps to follow in, I have to tell you. And I don't think anybody can really measure up but the scholarships are named for her. And this year we have two students receiving the scholarships. One in the, excuse me, uh, physician's assistant program. And many of you did meet her at some of the luncheons. It's Amna Amajad, and she is the class of 22. And she has received it, as I said, two years in a row. And the other one is Kirby Sclafani, class of 22 also, and she is a theater member. Uh, the Guild also started years ago, the Make a Difference Fund, and now the college has taken over and does the Make a Difference Fund. And I am so impressed. And Caitlin, you can tell me for sure. No, we have surpassed just this year alone, $9,000 that can assist students who are in need of financial emergency. It's thrilled to hear that. Yes, that's correct. Congratulations. Yeah, good hands to all of you. Uh, before we go into the main event, I have been asked to mention that the Guild, the guild staunch supporters through the East, Jean Unjum, and I, I think correctly more times than correctly, but uh, has recently passed away and her family wanted us to uh, know about it. She loved the Guild and she really wanted it to move forward. Her son, Eric, graduated in 72 from Wagner College. She was such a generous and giving person. And it's only fitting that we do think of her today and perhaps we can put something in our newsletter for those who can't attend. As I said earlier, it's fitting that today we highlight one of the college's best programs. We rely on nurses all the time. Wagner's program is really 
outstanding. And I've had parents say to me, well, why should I pay Wagner prices when they could go elsewhere? Because the Wagner education is superior in a lot of ways. And Pat will share that with us. But before we get into that with Dr. Tucker, uh, I'd like to continue the um, tradition that we've always had at the beginning of our meetings. Michael Messino will lead us in the pledge to the flag. Michael. And as always, just give me a minute. I'm going to put a full flag up. And everyone's ready, right? We are ready, Michael. Go okay. for it. I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of, the of the United States of America. Of America. To, to the, the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and, just and justice, justice for, for all. For all. Thank you, Michael. Okay. Has Has Kim been able to join us? I don't see her up on here because the School of Nursing is named after her mom. And Caitlin, I believe you're going to pinch hit for Kim this morning. I am, yes. So if she is not on, Kim, are you with us? I don't see her name listed. Okay, so I'll go right ahead. I'm happy to do it. Um, so it is our great pleasure today to welcome our guest speaker, Dr. Patricia Tooker, Dean of the Evelyn L. Spiro School of Nursing. Pat received a BSN, MSN, and post-master's nurse practitioner certificate, all from Wagner College. She holds RN licensure in both New York and New Jersey. Pat's 20 plus years of practice prior to entering higher education consisted of many staff and leadership positions within acute care and ambulatory settings. Her teaching responsibilities in the Spiro School of Nursing have included undergraduate and graduate courses with expertise in critical care, leadership, and management. Pat has also taught for many years in Wagner's undergraduate general education learning curriculum. In 2010, she was appointed to the position of Dean for Integrated Learning, which she held until January 2017. She was responsible for overseeing the undergraduate curriculum, better known as the Wagner Plan, and continues to represent Wagner as an active member and spokesperson within the national circuits in higher education. Pat is a board member at Edgar Lutheran Homes and Services on Staten Island and was appointed to the Staten Island Health and Wellness Advisory Council, which is overseen by the borough president of Staten Island. Pat, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. We want to thank you, thank Dan you. Martin, thank you. and of course, Caitlin and Karen, thank you for this wonderful opportunity to highlight my wonderful school of nursing. <laughs> um, there's not much more that I could add to that bio other than the fact that Wagner has been my second home, as you obviously have heard. I went to high school right down the road at Notre Dame Academy. Uh, first stepped foot on this campus um, as a high school student, uh, actually a student athlete and had the opportunity to play basketball against the college team and fell in love with Wagner. Um, Coming here for my baccalaureate degree, coming back for my master's degree while I was working in the private sector was the, the foundation of my career and the opportunity to be on this campus continually. It wasn't until many years later, after being an adjunct while working in the hospital and climbing the ladder in the hospital settings, that an opportunity arose for me to come here as an instructor. And I often kid about this, that I was coming here for a year and then I would go back to the real world of nursing. Well, here I am 20 plus years later and with my 10 years of adjuncting, I have a 35 year history of teaching here at Wagner College. So yes, this is my second home. And I am just so honored to be able to spend a few moments with you today to talk about um, the leadership uh, opportunities, the leadership challenges, and particularly my faculty and students during this unprecedented uh, time in healthcare and in the, in, in the world. So nursing came to an absolute halt just as all curriculums did here at Wagner College a little over a year ago. Uh, unbeknownst to us was the fact that we would have to shift from 
teaching and learning in the classroom, which is inherent in our curriculum, as well as in the clinical settings to going virtual, um, something that we don't do all that much here at Wagner College. But I, I, I do want to emphasize that without any break in our curriculum, we were able to do it. And I want to speak a little bit. I crafted just a few notes. It's not usually common for me to read notes. I love to speak from the heart, but I do want to go over just a few things with you and then highlight my nursing resource center, which I am sitting in right now, uh, because this was the game changer for us. This small lab that most nursing schools will have a nursing resource center or a simulation lab. But here at Wagner College, um, it's small, but it has allowed us to continue our studies, our teaching and learning. And we are able to put forth modern technology in a simulated setting um, that, that was so important for us to continue in our path during the pandemic, but, but will stay important to us as we move forward. So just, just very briefly, as you may know or may not, what makes our School of Nursing unique is that we're not attached to a large university. So for a small liberal arts college to survive among the NYUs, the Columbia, the uh, Cornell, it's challenging, and especially during a pandemic when we can't walk across the street to a hospital where many of my colleagues that are affiliated with large teaching institutions were able to um, go right into their clinical settings where we were not. However, as Aletta said so beautifully, Wagner still stands so highly recommended nationally as well as throughout New York State in one of the top nursing programs. And I attribute that to our size to the fact that we are inherently entrenched in the liberal arts with our baccalaureate degree, and we have been right from the beginning, and that we are creating not just highly skilled nurses, but we are creating Wagner College nurses that are known throughout the world as being the best of the best. And that's because of all of the work that my faculty do, not only for their skills and their theory, but creating the professionals that we know the world needs. So with that said, two articles come to mind very quickly. I'm always reading journal articles and two that came across my desk recently was from the Journal of Liberal Education. And there was an article on how COVID-19 turned higher ed upside down. And it certainly did. And it's still in the process of doing that. And then that article, it spoke greatly about all of the changes that had to occur on college campuses and are still occurring so that we could keep the young generation educated. Another article that comes to mind was the, in the Journal of Professional Nursing, and it was called The Pandemic Journey. Is it a good time to be a dean? And when I saw that topic, I said, wow, I have to read this. And it was interesting because it spoke about the school challenges. It spoke about all of the challenges of the students. It spoke about the college challenges and all that had to occur. And certainly here at Wagner College, we had started with a pre-pandemic. Sorry. Sorry, folks. We had started with a pre-pandemic committee that went into a pandemic planning committee and the nursing school had to shift gears so that if we could be here on campus, we had to have criteria very specific to coming into my NRC that was submitted to Albany along with Dr. Joel's Martin, Dr. Joel Martin's return to campus. Even when there was very few people here on campus, my nursing department was running 24-7. So some of the learning points that came not only during that particular article uh, when I read it, but also from my own experiences are these five um, bullets. Be visible. I was visible right from the beginning with emails. My undergraduate program director sent letters monthly to update the students, even when we weren't seeing them as much as we were used to. We consistently stayed as visible as we could technology. I had to create a point for when I was available. And we like to say that we're available 24-7 when we're leaders, but we do need to sleep and eat and spend time with our families. So I had very distinct times that I was available and it, and it was almost all the time. So that while all of this chaos was occurring, my staff and my students knew that we were working behind the scenes on every change that was coming our way. I had to accept, and I generally do, coming from a large family and being a ball player, um, I generally do accept the fact that I don't know everything. 
but in order to be on a call or with students or with colleagues and administrators here on campus um, and, and work effectively, there, were, there was a much greater understanding of me being able to say to folks, I just don't know right now. And, and students and staff and faculty would say, well, what, what do you mean you don't know? And it became okay to be able to say, we just don't know right now. Let's give it a little bit more time. Fourth, be honest. I pride myself on being honest, maybe a little bit too transparent sometimes, according to my family and sometimes my staff, but no sugarcoating. When things were rough, I absolutely gave the news as it came to me from my, uh, from my administrative staff. And lastly, something that I've always remembered, most likely from my dad, it's not what you say, it's what you do. And I have to remember that all eyes are on me and all eyes are on you when you're a leader and folks are really looking to see if you're going to be able to get your team through this crisis. So I'm sure that when the World Health Organization decided a few years back to designate 2020 as the year of the nurse and the midwife, it had no idea nursing would take center stage into the spotlight to play this critical and integral role in the COVID-19 pandemic. No matter what role the nurse plays, the setting that she's in, where she works, the population she or he serves, nursing as a profession has truly shown the world the depth of our expertise and knowledge, knowledge during this pandemic a commitment and passion for work, innovation and creativity to address and manage even the most challenging situations and the power of compassion and the love of mankind. There's an old saying, may you live in interesting times and oh boy, is this interesting. To that point, most of us would surely welcome some downright boring, oh, oh hum, I got nothing to do today news. That's not the case. Every day is a challenge. We're confronted daily with the enormous and pervasive impact of a historic pandemic, a relentless assault on what we knew, what we knew as being safe, what we knew as being normal. We took for granted that we could get together with friends and family, that we could travel, go to weddings, go to graduations, have a pinning ceremony, be together for a guild luncheon. All of that we took for granted until now. Yet, thankfully, nursing stays strong and we stay steadfast and nursing remains courageous, front and center. Indeed, what profession is more laudable than nursing in terms of making a difference in the battle against COVID-19? So frankly, I can't think of a better cause or a better reason to be a Dean right now and to educate the future of the healthcare arena in providing care that we know will be to a level that's global like this pandemic was. I want to prepare this formidable workforce to prevent and conquer future healthcare challenges. And it's no coincidence that nursing is annually heralded as the most trusted profession. This kind and sacred trust is earned through actions, effectiveness, and outcomes. And I'm hoping that in the few years that I'm here as the Dean, and hopefully for a few more, that I can continue to instill those virtues on all of my nurses. So thank you. And I do want to take a little bit of time right now to have you look at my nursing resource center. And we are lucky enough to have a class occurring right now that you'll get a little bit of a bird's eye view on what it's like to be in the resource center. So let me don my mask. And with the help of this wonderful student, you will see my nursing resource center for the next few moments. We're in one of the oldest rooms here where when I was a student here in the 70s, the simulators were mannequins. And this is where we practiced, if you will, for a few hours before we went out into the real world. We still do that, but unfortunately during the pandemic, we were shut out of all of the clinical settings because of safety reasons. So our nursing resource center, as some of our alumni may remember it, over the years took a transition and a transformation into a simulation lab as well, where some of these mannequins and Viraj, you can scan the room a little bit, are simulators. They're attached to computers. And even though they look a little scary, and yes, we do decorate them for Halloween, um, they speak. They tell us what's wrong. It's as if a patient is here. And right in this room is our first sim man, as you will, 
in the area where we do all of our critical care education. What happens here is that the students will be in the room providing the care while the faculty and staff, you can follow me, are behind a two-way mirror where the computer can change the scenarios and the students will have to respond and we film and then the students debrief in their situations that they're in. Back here, we have a second room with a second station with two-way mirrors that we have made into our maternal child room. So this is the area, and Mirage, you can scan it, where simulation takes place in all of our maternal child courses, from newborns to our newest edition. Whoops, that's not a new edition. It's just quite heavy, and that's a pregnant belly. But this young man is Hal. He's an eight year old pediatric simulator that is so real life that he cries real tears, has seizures, um, will be coughing, will be in pain, will be asking for his mom and dad. And we can put all of the equipment necessary to treat him right here with Hal. As you can see, our equipment is very, very similar if not the same equipment that we purchase in the hospitals. Over here, we have Victoria who gives birth. Here is the newborn that the students practice, the baby cries. And of course we have scenarios that are not the normal delivery. But Victoria's water will break, she will go into labor and she will deliver a newborn. We also have over here a few of the older mannequins and some of the equipment that we use for newborns that have to go into um, incubators. Again, something like this is a med cart or a supply cart that nurses are very familiar with, IV poles. In the back of the nursing resource center is where the students will sit and then we will watch the filming that occurred during the simulation and we'll debrief. What went well, what didn't go well, what was right, what was wrong. Mirage is gonna follow me down a corridor now, and this was a large classroom years ago, but we boxed it in two years ago out of need and necessity for more space and more learning. So I'm gonna walk you into our newest area and introduce you to Professor Kathy Bocucuso, who is my Nursing Resource Center Simulator Director, <laughs> along with Dr. Laura Bonfrolio. And this is one of our simulation classes that is going on right now. And this is Mrs. Brody, yeah. On Emma Rose. She's on uh, um, a ventilator. She's uh, on the monitor. She has some. Um... <laughs> okay, so uh, she has IV fluids going. She's able to speak and um, have breath sounds and heart sounds. She's um, able to suction her and she has a chest tube. And she has all kinds of edema here and her swelling in her legs. Um, oops. Okay. Whoops. She's off the ventilator. She's, the ventilator. She's, She's ventilator, not breathing. Right? Um, we have a camera on the ceiling that can film all of what is going on. Mm -hmm. And if you scan the room, Mirage, you'll see some of the similar equipment. And behind us is the two way mirror again where the faculty uh, will be watching all that's going on. So one hour, what are we doing today with the students? So today we're just uh, preparing for our simulation with um, some Brody. So we're going over a few things um, as far as the IV lines and the uh, chest for chest. So um, she has different uh, types of IVs, IV lines, and we're going to talk about uh, feeding tubes. Mrs. Brody also has. Um, a feeding tube, we have a Foley, 
And so before the simulation, just go over a few um, things. We do a little uh, overview of uh, the uh, lab work and the fluids work, that we fluids the that we should be getting, right? And then we have a med plot that we're going to be doing meds here. Um, that is able to scan the patient the bracelet and we scan the meds and like the egg. <laughs> so every um, everything that we can simulate here um, helps the students in their skills and their knowledge of when they're in the healthcare setting. Now what's unique this semester is this particular group of students were not able to be in any setting in the pool, uh, which which was a, a, a big challenge, not only to us as the academics, but also to the students. So this semester, as you can see the students sitting here, they're actually in clinical settings for a number of hours, but also complemented with those hours is coming into the sim lab. And it's all really a uh, an effort that's occurring right now in higher ed for nursing students because the industry demands us to be so quick on our feet today and to perfect the skills where in the past, when we were new graduates, there was, a, there was more of a uh, time where we could be mentored and followed where today the expectations is, uh, you're gonna get out there and you're gonna be working almost immediately. That's not to say that they don't have orientation periods, but simulation labs help the student greatly to perfect those skills or hone down on those skills prior to going into the healthcare setting. Any questions for us or any questions that the Guild would like to pose towards any one of my students or my faculty? No pressure. Yeah, no pressure at all. They didn't even know this was. They didn't even know this was going on. We just snuck into that class. Um, so, I I was just going to ask how many students are currently in the nursing program. Wow, we so have about sixty. We when when uh, this past fall, when we we only have fall entry. But we graduate a cohort now in December, my second degree program. So we have the traditional students that typically come right after high school. First two years are all their core requirements and then they're accepted into the School of Nursing and junior and senior year is the curriculum. We have second degree students who have a bachelor's degree already and they come into the, in the fall with a 15 month accelerated program. My graduate studies is the family nurse practitioner track and also the nurse educated track. And as of a few years ago, we have the very first and only doctoral program here on Wagner's campus, and that's the doctorate in nursing practice. So last fall, my numbers were 635 students were in the School of Nursing when the entire campus was a little bit under 2000. So we are without a doubt the largest program. We're just going to show you a picture on grad assistant. Hi, Dylan Hi. and Amanda. Um, yes. These are graduate sure students. <laughs> they're, they're pursuing their graduate studies here at Wagner, but they work to offset some of their tuition down here in the Nursing Resource Center and Sim Lab a few days a week. So they're yeah. both practicing nurses and also expanding, extending their studies. And we have our lovely Sim people here that can do so many different things. You can, uh, you can adjust their heart rate, you can make them go hypertensive or hypotensive. They could scream, they could vomit, oh. Oh. so you can really do a lot with them. So it's a great resource to help the students learn. So they, yeah, so so these particular simulators run off this pad, it's like an iPad, and we can also speak right through her. Oh, oh. I'm in so much pain. <laughs> so, the, so they're really very, uh, very high tech, very high yeah. tech. Um, and, and the, these two stu grad students in particular are both emergency room nurses at um, Methodist Hospital in Brooklyn, which is now part of the Columbia Presbyterian system. So they're, they're, they're well skilled. And Victoria is one of our undergrad <laughs> alumni. So she came back for her graduate degree. Five years ago. <laughs> Five years ago already. Any other questions for us? I know we have more of the guild meeting to go and I don't want to keep, I could, Keep showing off this beautiful area, but uh, Pat, Pat, it's it's Claire Regan. Hi, Claire. Hi, Pat. 
Hi, quick question, a follow up to Linda's question. Out of that very successful enrollment, what is the male female ratio in the in the whole enrollment? Still quite low, <laughs> still quite low, but um, it's been picking up, I would say. So yeah, five out of 60, five out of 60 in this one particular class. So, it, you know, it's still quite low, but certainly much more popular than it was many, many years ago. The second degree program, Claire, has um, a little bit of a higher percentage of male students. And certainly a lot more, uh, you know, many more of our students that have a bachelor's degree and coming back for a master's are male students in some of the highest acuity areas come back. Great, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Pat, it's a letter. Yes. For years, I wanted to attend your pinning ceremony because I thought it was so important and it always conflicted with our board of trustee meetings. But Correct. two years ago, you were generous enough to invite me and I said, you know what? They can live without me for two hours. And I came over to Main Hall and it was so inspiring. Thank you. Well, I will be happy to share the link with you this particular June. Uh, we have decided that we will do a virtual pinning. It's not quite uh, the same as not being in person, but we did it last May and it was beautiful, Aletta. So I'll, I'll do the same and hopefully Kim can join us as well. That would be wonderful. Now, Perfect. we really want to thank you for taking the time and students, we're sorry we interrupted your instruction right now, but this was so fitting and so important because without the nurses this year, would have been pure hell for everyone. Thank you, Aletta. It's one of our most esteemed <laughs> board you. members, Aletta Diamond. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. So in closing, thank you all. Thank you. Mirage is gonna follow me out. And of course, none of this would be possible if it weren't the Evelyn L. Spiro School of Nursing. Absolutely. And we were fortunate enough to get this picture recently from Kim. It uh, is on one of the walls here as you enter. And I just want to show you one more area that I'm very proud of. Whenever we get a 100% pass rate, we love to brag. And um, that's our wall of fame. And I'm happy to say right now, I just got my first quarter board scores back. And the New York State passing rate is 82.24. And Wagner College is coming in at 91 point, I think 1.8. So our board scores are back up. We took a little bit of a dip last semester, obviously with COVID. And I'm always looking for another additional plaque to say 100%. But thank you all for having me. I'm gonna stay on the line. I'm gonna let the student go back to admissions who was so helpful with the camera. And yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed this program. May we want to act again, Pat. May we come we back again? We want to see your cameraman. You. We want to see your cameraman and give him a plug. Sure. <laughs> Gary, what? Sorry, it's it's a little it's a little shaky. Right now. But hi, everyone. My Good name job. is Good job. Good job. Thank you so much. Good job. Junior, junior level, uh, theater and arts administration. Arts administration major. Thank you very much for Thank coming you over and helping me. Thank you. Thank the you. The device got a little bit <laughs> loopy, but we did it. Thank you. We did. Thank you so much. Great. Great. Right. Now, I believe now that we're finished with the uh, Sim Lab and Pat's presentation, I believe we have two Wagner grads that are nurses, and I would love to hear from them. Uh, I'm looking here to make sure. Teresa, I'm afraid I'm going to mispronounce your last name. Is it Nauta? Am I close, Teresa? We'll take it. You'll take it. <laughs> we'll take it. <laughs> like a letter. We, we, pronounce, we pronounce it Nauta. Oh, I'm but, sorry. You know, there's astronauts and nautical, so I have to forgive people for saying it that way because that's all they know. That's so, all they know. But would you be kind enough to share with us where your career took you after you left Wagner? Yeah. Well, first of all, I have to say, I graduated in 1974, 
and uh, your video was is not on on okay um i graduated in 1974 with baccalaureate and then i had my master's from wagner and um i did not have a sim lab like that i am blown away with that that is just priceless um yes. the i started out just like everybody else med surge nurse on on the units and from there, I developed into the specialties for uh, OBGYN. Um, I became a home care nurse. I did uh, research. I did uh, risk management. Uh, I ended my career as a director of, of quality. And um, right now, they're actually calling me in to do audits. So I do. But uh, one of the things that I enjoyed most was being an educator. And what I found as an educator kind of dovetails back to what our dean was saying. When I was at Wagner, they taught us the ideology of critical thinking, which she alluded to with some of the um, procedures that go on in the, in, in the lab. And it's in a given situation, this is what you would do. Very importantly, why you would do it as well as how to do it. And then they walked you through it. And then you did your evaluation. Did you do it correctly? What more needs to be done? How did the patient manage? Now, those five components will carry you through life, never mind just the, um, the nursing segment of your, of your, of your life. And that with a little common sense, which hopefully your parents throw in, um, <laughs> it makes, makes for a great career. And, and I truly enjoyed my, my nursing career. And, and it's still going. I do per diem work doing the audits. And Teresa, as an educator, you change Thanks. lives. I retired as a board of ed person. You do change lives. And yeah. thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, you, you notice it because... Uh, when you when the students first come into you, um, the, the program I was dealing with, it, that critical thinking was not too well established. Um, but by the end of the semester, working with other instructors, we managed to elevate that a little bit. So, and that critical thinking is is the key to any nurse's delivery of care. Wonderful, uh, <laughs> Alyssa McDonald, are you with us today? I saw your name on the list. Do we have Alyssa? Alyssa had said to me she was going to be a little late. Oh, okay. Um, she well, had an appointment, but she, she had an appointment, but would be trying to get to us at the end. Well, I have to tell you, my husband had a procedure a few years back, and I was in the room with him before they started, and there were the nurses in green with the patch on their arm, and he said, "Oh, Wagner College." I'm in good hands. By the way, this is my wife. She's on the board of trustees. And I was going, oh my God, don't do that to them. But there is a feeling of comfort knowing that, that uh, they are Wagner trained. You know, absolutely. And I was so thrilled to see Laura Von Folio. Uh, I worked with Laura and, you know, part of having a good curriculum is having the best educators. I never understood blood gases until Laura sat me down and went through blood gases. My God, I remember it to this day now. So it's a, it's a wonderful thing that Wagner's got going. We graduated knowing we were really up there in the upper echelons, but you don't realize it maybe till the end of your career that, wow, it really was the best. You had the basics, you had the strong fundamental. Now I think I see Alyssa trying to get on. Okay. Am I correct? Alyssa, is that you? Yes, it's me. <laughs> you were having a hard time. I'm but bouncing around here. I, I don't even want to ask how you're doing that. <laughs> uh, Alyssa, do you want to share with us your experience from, I mean, the two of you are babies. I was at Wagner in the sixties. so. Uh, Tell me how your Wagner experience helped you and where it led you with your career. 
Well, um, Terry and I graduated two years difference, but my curriculum was very different than Terry's. We were in a new integrated curriculum. So what, one of the things I learned from Wagner is always to be open to new experiences and, and the, um, the joy of always wanting to continue to learn. Um, I worked at, um, as a staff nurse on a medical surgical unit with Terry when I first graduated. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and then I worked in critical care, substance abuse. Um, I became a nurse manager. And, um, and then I went into quality um, management. And um, I worked as I was a director of quality. And then I returned back to nursing and became a senior director for, um, for nursing. So, and where it really started was at Wagner. And on my senior year, we had a program we called, um, we were able to kind of plan our own um, experience. And I wanted to do nursing leadership. And they sent us to the US Public Health Service Hospital. And we worked on a unit with the staff. And at that time we did team nursing. And then we had to lead the team. So we had all these RNs who were working, who probably were like, oh, ro rolling their eyes. <laughs> but we provided the leadership for the team and the conference for the, um, the group. And I learned about quality. And one of the things they said was that when you go for your first position, um, ask them about what is their philosophy of nursing. And, and I, you know, I did that and I wanted to be part of, they called it the audit committee at that time. And really um, I had to wait for someone to give up the position so I could get on the committee. And, but you know, all that started at Wagner, it gave me that basis. It introduced me to the Nurse Practice Act, um, which is still in effect today. Um, and I also was able to work with the New York State Nurses Association um, and the ANA, I was a delegate to the ANA, the American Nurses Association, and attended their conferences. And um, it was, I was very happy at Wagner. It was a great start. And um, I recommend it to uh, people mm -hmm. today. Well, be, be, the two of you need to be ambassadors for us. You have to speak the truth and let everybody know why Wagner is such a special place to be and why people like Pat Tooker and her team make such an impact. And I thank you for that. Thank you. I sound like I'm talking to a military person, but this year the nurses were our front line. So thank you for your service, all of you. And Pat, thanks for keeping the light on and things going. Thank you, Aletta. My pleasure to be here today. Thank you all. Is there anyone else who wishes to make a comment on our presentation thus far? Any other nurses that I've missed by mistake? No. All right, then in the spirit of all of this- You've this got Kathy with her hand oh, up. Sorry, Aletta, I don't I'm know sorry. if you could oh. see her. Uh, no, Mary Rose uh, has every- Oh, Mary Rose no. wants to know. Say, Mary Rose, unmute yourself so you can ask. Let's see. My name is Kathy Milano, and I'm a graduate of the nursing program. Uh huh. Um, I graduated in 1970, and I did public health at first, and then I went into obstetrics. And a lot of my career is in obstetrics. I was a, I taught fetal monitoring for the national organization. And I was a nurse educator. I was a um, CPR instructor, trainer, and um, also did some home care. I've been a nurse manager and I've been a nurse on the unit. <laughs> and I actually ended my career the last five years. I worked 12 hour nights and it was nice to get back to the bedside and hands-on and it was a good experience. Um, but I loved Wagner. I felt my education was fabulous, the best, and um, no regrets, and loved everything I did. Do you think we understood and appreciated it when we were there as much as we do now when we look back? Well, I know when I went in, I was like a high B 
student, a high C, low B student. And there were a lot of people who were straight A students. And so I said, oh dear, I need to study hard because otherwise I'm gonna be in trouble. And the A students ended up in trouble because they didn't know how to study. <laughs> and I ended up doing much better. Um, I did get my master's at Adelphi University and um, I was a perinatal nurse clinician. I did that through the March of Dimes. It was like a four or five months course and it was North Shore University Hospital, but now it's not that anymore. Um, and that was a wonderful experience also. So all of that was really good, really good. Now, thank you. Uh, Mary Rose wanted to know, uh, Pat, perhaps you can answer this for me or one of the ladies. What is the Nurse Practice Act? Anybody? Well, as the Dean, I can answer, but, but my colleagues, my nursing colleagues can chime in as well. You know, there are several documents that, that we really um, follow our practice by, our professional behavior by. The Nurse Practice Act is in, inherently gives all of the objectives of our behaviors, uh, the, the expected behaviors, along with the code of ethics, similar to any profession that would have a specific document that guides them in their daily um, practices. If, if anybody else would like to um, add to that, please do so. That's a very, very brief summary of what the Nurse Practice Act is. And when was hey, it established? Alyssa. I missed the date. When was it established? Wow. Pacific I think 1972. I would have to look that up. <clears throat> I, I kind of yeah, heard a, re recent, a, a relatively recent date. That's why I was surprised that an act, the Nurse Practice Act, took so long to be established. Was there one that preceded it? There may have been an earlier one, and this one perhaps was redesigned. It. Right, just, just, as, just as our scopes of practice uh, are, are, have changed considerably, it, you know, there might be a newer version, which I could certainly check with my faculty, but um, I was here in the mid seventies and that nurse practice act was presented to me on day one of my baccalaureate mm -hmm. studies. But again, our scopes of practice, just as the um, years ago, we had diploma programs and associate programs. We still do have a few, but when the baccalaureate now is the level of entry, mm -hmm. the masters of today was the bachelors of yesterday. Doctoral programs were not um, as, as prevalent as they are today. So uh, our, scope and span of responsibility and practices has changed as, and so too will uh, the, the practice act depending upon what state you're in. May I ask one more question? Because I'm not a, I, I don't come from nursing so it's always so intriguing to me to hear about the curricula. Um, do you cover midwif midwifery there at Wagner? We, we have a full semester of 15 week course of, of maternal child, just as we do with pediatrics, but uh, we, we touch on the, the role of the midwife oh. as an advanced practice in nursing, but midwifery is a cohort or curriculum that is specifically in the graduate studies that we do not have. Our graduate studies is either the family nurse practitioner, which is where the midwife would be, um, or the nurse educator. Oh, very interesting, oh. thank you. Uh, Pat, You're welcome. Pat, some of the folks, and I'm one of them, your building, the building that you are in in the Sim Lab is, when I went to school, I believe it was called New Men's Dorm. Am I correct? John Cronin, I think you were down around my vintage. Wasn't it New Men's Dorm when we were there? Wasn't that the one that had the dining hall back then yes. also? Yeah, 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 right, right next right. to Parker Hall, between right. Parker. Oh, okay. Yeah, if that's it. Yes. Wasn't it Twin Towers? No, no. No, it's Freshman Hall. It was right in the Tower uh, When I saw Freshman that, I thought Hall it was a science right building. There. I can't relate to where Hall. that building is. Behind Parker. It's uh, behind Parker Hall. When so was that Parker building Hall. built? Right. Parker Hall, and then wow. down the steps was, was Freshman Hall, was the cafeteria right. and Freshman Hall. 
Well, it, it was, was new men's dorm in the 60s. Yeah, yeah and we became yeah. freshman okay. men, yeah. Well, in, in, yeah, in the, in the late 60s, because I was, I lived in Parker Hall. I was a Notre Dame girl before I became a Wagner student. Well, yeah, I think no women lived there in the 60s. I don't think in Parker Hall. Oh, when, excuse me. I was there in 1968 to 70. Okay, okay. that's girls. when that might have been when it changed. Yeah, there were girls there. In, yeah, in it was the 60s. when I Parker Hall. When I was there, was uh, faculty offices and some classrooms. Oh, right. I, I graduated okay. same thing as Teresa in 1974. Okay, right. Well, do we have any more nursing questions before we go <laughs> down memory lane? Any further? right? <laughs> okay. Now, in the spirit of giving, uh, and again, I want to thank the nursing department for uh, giving us this window into what they do, how they do it. And uh, all I can say to them is carry on the good work. It's very impressive. And again, thank you. Thank you, you Alexis. Now, in the spirit of giving, we are going to have door prizes. All of your names. Now, Karen and Caitlin are going to take over on this. This was, uh, the gifts are being provided by the executive committee's generosity. And the girls are uh, going to, they have all your names in a beautiful vase and they are going to pull names to see who gets the door prizes. So ladies, take it away for me. You're on mute, Karen. You think I should should know by now, right? But I can't spotlight myself, but I hope everybody can see me since I'm speaking. Yeah. I have it on speaker view. You can see me. Okay, good. Yep. Okay. So thank you again to the generosity of the Guild Executive Committee. We have four door prizes today. The first is an Amazon gift card. Let's see. And the winner of that is Helen Settles. Can you see? I don't think Helen is on today, but she yes, is. Yes, local. I am. Yeah, she's there. Well, oh, congratulations to Helen. About Parker Hall. Ah, okay. Well, congratulations, Helen. We will and email that to you. you. Congratulations. Um, okay. And the next three Thank prizes you. are actually from local businesses and also Wag, uh, Wagner owns, uh, Wagner alumni owned businesses. So the first prize is a Mark's uh, Bake Shop gift basket. And the winner of that is John Cronin. Oh, hey. So they hey. actually shipped, so we will send that to you. Thank you. Congratulations, John. The next prize is a breakfast tray from Heartland Bagels. And in the event uh, the person that wins is from out of town, we will send you a Mark's uh, Bake Shop gift basket instead. And the winner of this one is Ann Irving. Oh, Ann. Wonderful. Ann's the wife of a former trustee and a nurse also. Yeah. And the final gift is Joe and Pat's, the famous pizzeria, a gift certificate to there. And again, if the winner is from out of town, we'll send a Mark's Fake Shop gift basket. Oh, and look who the winner is, Michael Messino. Congratulations, <laughs> oh, Michael. Hey, hey, Michael. <laughs> The birthday boy won. <laughs> Michael, congratulations on your birthday and on your door prize. Well, thank you very congratulations much. Congratulations to everyone. Congratulations, Michael. Thank you, thank you. I would like to take a moment to say again, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, each Zoom has been a little bit more exciting, uh, raw, and the good, the best part of it really is that we have raised a good amount of money a difference fund. Now, our June meeting is tentatively scheduled June 9th at noon, and we have an author lined up. Uh, we are not sure yet, so I'm not going to say the name, but we will be getting information to you. And hopefully, Caitlin and Karen will be able to take a screenshot of all of us that we can include in the newsletter that goes out after these. And I hope you all enjoyed it. And come on. We're losing her a little bit. Who are we losing? 
you you've been breaking up a little bit. You're you, we didn't hear everything you said. All your beautiful words. <laughs> My words of wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> June 9th is hey Anne. I'm Hi. just seeing Anne for the first time now. June 9th noon will be our next Zoom. Hopefully, we will have the numbers that we had today and more. We did have 30 people who said that they were going to attend today. I think uh, face-wise, we had a few less. But um, we're going to take a picture, hopefully, with all of you, send it out in the newsletter. And again, thank you so much for your commitment to Wagner and the energy that you bring to these Zooms. I truly appreciate it. OK, we'll have everybody smile. Thank everybody you. smile. We have it. Thank you, everyone. Thank That's you. That's it, folks. Thank you so, so much. Again, Michael, happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Karen, you'll send me the information on uh, Ms. Ms. Settles. Yes, I will. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, everyone, stay well and see you in June, if not before. Bye-bye. Thank you very Bye -bye. much. Now enjoy Bye -bye. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.